Okay, last lesson we had a look at gas exchange within insects. Today we are going to be looking at gas exchange within fish. So this is taken straight from the specification point F on the OCRA specification for A level. Okay, where we know that fish have gills and these gills are comprised of gill filaments and that are lamellae. So lamellae, we have primary lamellae that make up these gill filaments. These gill filaments are made of primary lamellae and there are lots of them. Therefore, we have a large surface area for gas exchange. These primary lamellae have secondary lamellae on them. You can see them in this image here. The secondary lamellae here that almost protrude from the primary lamellae. These are from the mark scheme, which is why they're in a red box. So they're very important marking points. There's also a very good blood supply to the gills. You can see here the artery and the veins here that are labeled in the diagram. This creates a very short diffusion distance between the blood and the water. And it also helps to maintain the concentration, concentration gradients for faster diffusion. Here is a microscope image of the gills um, and the filaments and a higher magnification. You need to be able to identify the primary and secondary lamellae from an image such as this for your exam. This diagram is showing the composition of the uh, lamellae, which are comprised of the primary and secondary lamellae, and how they form the gill filaments by stacking up to form the gill plates. The water flows through these to aid with the gas exchange. Okay, we're going to look at the countercurrent exchange system. So this is where the water and the blood flow in opposite directions over the gill filaments. So you can see that quite nice in this image here. You can see the direction of the water in blue flowing from left to right, whereas if you look up here, you can see the blood flow flowing from right to left. They're flowing in opposite directions to maximise the and maintain the concentration gradient to allow for effective gas exchange throughout the gill filaments. This diagram shows how the buccal cavity works um, in terms of the fish opening and closing the mouth to aid the water moving over the gills and out through the operculum. Okay, so here the fish is opening the mouth, as you can see here. So as the, the mouth opens, you get an increase within the, the volume of the buccal cavity because you have an increase in the volume of the buccal cavity. There's a decrease in the pressure inside here. Therefore, water will rush in through the mouth into the buccal cavity here. When the fish closes its mouth, when the fish closes its mouth, you will see here that there's a decrease within the volume in the buccal cavity. Therefore, the pressure increases inside the buccal cavity also known as the fish's mouth. Therefore, the water is going to be forced to flow past, flow past these gill filaments here, uh, where gas exchange will occur, and out through the operculum, which is, you can see, if you do get a fish, you can see it behind the fish's head. So that concludes um, how gas exchange occurs within fish. I do encourage you to have a look at a fish's head next time you have the opportunity to identify where the operculum is, the gill filaments and um, the lamellae. Um, thank you for watching and remember in your exams do not use the word it, they, size or amount and good luck.